Welcome to Managing Nebraska's Public Roads and Streets Introduction, The Big Picture. This is the first in a series of videos, the purpose of which is to summarize Nebraska's management of public roads and streets as directed by state law and also by rule and regulation. Best practices and other related information are also included. The target audience is county highway and city street superintendents and those aspiring to attain those positions. Elected officials and anyone interested in the management of the state's public roads and streets are also encouraged to view these videos to learn about Nebraska's system of roads and streets. This video gives a big picture view of the structure of Nebraska's management of its highway road and street systems according to Nebraska Highway Law. It briefly discusses key statutes and requirements pertaining to county roads and municipal streets emphasizing the importance of good management by the governing body and having a licensed county highway or city street superintendent. Articles 21, 23, and 25 of Chapter 39 passed by the legislature in 1969 created Nebraska's current system of classification, management, and funding for its highways, roads, and streets. The next few screens address some of the more important parts of Article 21. State Statute 39-2101 is a declaration that provides a broad overview or the big picture view of 1969 legislation, which at that time was a significant change in Nebraska's approach to its system of highways, roads, and streets. The Nebraska legislature recognized, determined, and declared that safe and efficient transportation over public roads is a matter of major importance to all Nebraskans. An integrated system of public roads is essential to the general welfare of the state. Providing an integrated system of facilities and the efficient management, operation, and control thereof are recognized as urgent problems and proper objectives of legislation pertaining to all public roads. Adequate public roads provide for the free flow of traffic, protect the health and safety of the citizens of the state, result in lower cost of motor vehicle operation, increase property values, and generally promote the economic and social progress of the state. Fundamental to the development of an integrated system of public roads is a determination of the function that each road segment serves. Through adoption by law of a functional classification system, it is the intent of the legislature that each segment of public road be identified according to the function it serves. Identifying functional classifications permits the establishment of uniform standards for design, construction, and maintenance. Standards must be adequate to meet the needs of an increasingly mobile society. For more information on these topics, see the classification and standards videos. 39-2101 assigns responsibility for public roads to the Nebraska Department of Transportation, counties, and municipalities based on functional classification. The intent is that each segment of road or street eventually be brought up to new and reconstructed standards and to provide reasonable and equitably distributed revenues. State Statute 39-2101 encourages improved management methods of planning, programming, budgeting, accounting, and inventory. Such management will provide citizens the opportunity to know how each governmental entity intends to spend its road and street money and to determine its performance when measured against its plans. It requires continuous planning and development, including one and six year plans and using systems of budgeting, accounting, and inventory. Cooperation among governmental entities is essential in bringing to fruition the development of a truly integrated system of public roads. The legislature provided by law the structure upon which the state, its counties, and its municipalities can work as equal partners in the development operation and management of such a system. There are two boards created by state statutes for regulating Nebraska's public highways, roads, and streets. The Board of Public Roads, Classifications, and Standards has 11 members, and the Board of Examiners for County Highway and City Street Superintendents has seven members. Both boards have a wide range of representation required by statute. They are appointed by the governor and all have four-year terms. Rules and regulations for highways, roads, and streets are part of the Nebraska Administrative Code, or NAC. Rules and regulations are interpretations of state statutes and have the force of law. 428 NAC and 425 NAC 
are the rules and regulations adopted by the NBCS and the BEX, respectively. You can find them on the Secretary of State's website or the Nebraska Department of Transportation's website, shown at the bottom of the screen. Responsibilities of the Board of Public Roads, or NBCS, are to develop specific criteria for each functional classification, hear appeals on functional classification issues, develop minimum standards for each functional classification, in cooperation with NDOT, counties, and municipalities, develop, support, approve, and implement programs and project strategies that provide additional flexibility in the design and maintenance standards. Hear and decide on relaxation of standards requests, apply penalties, and make random inspections of construction projects as needed. State Statute Section 392101 requires continuous planning and development. Part of that requirement is satisfied with an annual one and six year plan or program. A public hearing is required for the one year plan or program. Other statutes 392115 through 392119 address this in more detail. The purpose of one and six planning is to promote the orderly development of an integrated system of Nebraska's public roads. One and six planning provides the public with information and expectations, yet allows for flexibility such as changes in funding or for emergency projects. The law, in effect, discourages inefficient, haphazard, and inconsistent planning and construction of works and projects. The benefits of one and six planning are, it serves as a good management tool, allows the state, county, and municipalities to work as equal partners in the orderly development operation and management of an integrated system of public roads, provides a structure for cooperation and coordination among government entities for works and projects, timetables, and funding, allows public input at a hearing at least annually, maximizes use of public funds and informs the public where and how funds are being applied, the name 1 and 6 denotes planning a program of works and projects for a six-year period and requires designation of those works and projects intended to be accomplished in the first year of the plan. There are many ways a 1 and 6 plan or program can be presented to the public. This shows one example. It is a page from Nebraska DOT's annual program presenting projects in a list format. It is up to each entity to determine its own format and what to present to the public. The 1 and 6 process is to plan and develop the needed works and projects annually, seek public input via a public hearing, adopt the plan after considering public input, and then implement the plan or program. In 2019, the legislature passed a bill that no longer requires the NDOT, counties, and municipalities to submit one and six year plan or program reports to the Nebraska Board of Public Roads classifications and standards. The next several slides present state law relating to the budgeting, accounting, and inventory for highway road and street programs in Nebraska. The 2019 legislature passed a bill called LB82 that requires an annual certification from the Nebraska DOT and from each county and municipality that its highway road or street program has complied with the conditions set forth in State Statute Chapter 39, Section 2120. The certification form will be mailed to county clerks, city clerks, and village clerks each year to be signed and returned to the Nebraska Board of Public Roads Classifications and Standards by October 31st. It must be accompanied by a resolution authorizing the signatures on the certification. Failing to submit this certification form by the due date will result in the suspension of monthly highway allocation fund distributions to the political jurisdiction. The money is held in escrow. If the county or municipality complies within six months, it will receive the money in the escrow account. If not, the county or municipality loses the money. Filing a materially false certification form or constructing any highway road or street 
below NBCS minimum standards without prior approval will result in a reduction of 10% of the county's or municipality's share of highway user revenue allocated during the following calendar year. The penalty is assessed only after the NBCS reviews the facts and holds a public hearing on the matter. LB 82 also eliminated the requirement to submit one and six year plans and programs and the standardized system of annual reporting to the Nebraska Board of Public Roads Classifications and Standards. The next several slides address the conditions of State Statute Chapter 39, Section 2120 in more detail, specifically the financial aspects. State law requires that the highway road or street program of NDOT and each county and municipality must meet the plans, programs, or standards of design, construction, and maintenance for its highways, roads, and streets, expend all tax revenue for highway road or street purposes in accordance with approved plans, programs, or standards, including county and municipal tax revenue as well as highway user revenue allocations, use a system of revenue and cost accounting which clearly includes a comparison of receipts and expenditures for approved budgets, plans, programs, and standards. Uses a system of budgeting which reflects uses and sources of funds in terms of plans, programs, or standards and accomplishments. Uses an accounting system including an inventory of machinery, equipment, and supplies. Uses an accounting system that tracks equipment operation costs. Do not submit annual financial, budgeting, or accounting information or reports to the NBCS. State law promotes good management of roads and streets by requiring budgeting and accounting systems. With the required tools in place, it allows a comparison of roads and streets budgets to accomplishments and provides evidence of compliance with the law. Agencies are required to certify that public funds dedicated to roads and streets were spent properly and that standards were met. Although there is no more standardized system of annual reporting to the NBCS, there is still a requirement to submit an annual budget report to the State Auditor's Office. These reports are eventually made available online. The budget referred to here is the overall budget for the political jurisdiction not an individual itemized road or street budget. Audits are required annually through the State Auditor's Office. This is not referring only to the street or roads budget. It's the entire budget of the political jurisdiction that is subject to audit. It is not a requirement of the Nebraska Department of Transportation or the Nebraska Board of Public Roads Classifications and Standards or the Board of Examiners for County Highway and City Street Superintendents. If your entity has a federal aid project through the Nebraska DOT, an independent audit may be required. This applies to political jurisdictions that control, manage, and process federal aid road or street project funding. If the Nebraska DOT serves as the processor and manager of payments and revenues on behalf of a county's or municipality's federal aid project, this federal audit requirement does not apply. Record keeping is very important. Appropriate records must be available for auditors. Federal record keeping requirements may be different than state requirements, so be sure to understand the differences if you take on a federal aid project. Individual projects should be tracked separately with unique project identifiers on the documentation. The next few screens address some of the more important parts of Article 23. The County Highway and City Street Superintendent Act is covered by Article 23 of Section 39 of the State Statutes. The purposes of this section are to safeguard life, health, and property, to further professional management of road and street programs, create the Board of Examiners for County Highway and City Street Superintendents, and to provide a licensing system for those superintendents. The responsibilities of the Board of Examiners for County Highway and City Street Superintendents are receive applications for the superintendent's license, conduct examinations of applicants, renew licenses annually, approve professional development hours, suspend or revoke licenses, and administer through rules and regulations the County Highway and City Street Superintendents Act.
From a state law perspective, superintending duties must include developing and annually updating long-range plans based on needs and coordinated with adjacent local governmental units, developing annual programs for design, construction, and maintenance, developing annual budgets based on programmed projects and activities, implementing the capital improvements and maintenance activities provided in the approved plans, programs, and budgets, managing personnel, contractors, and equipment in support of such planning, programming, budgeting, and implementation of operations. For counties, there are additional references to superintending in Section 15 of Chapter 39. The actual job title of a county highway or city street superintendent varies. County examples would be county highway superintendent, county surveyor, or county engineer. Municipality examples could be overseer of the streets, street commissioner, chief of street maintenance, city engineer, or director of public works. From a state law perspective, a superintendent can be employed or consulting, but for counties, the superintendent cannot be a member of the county board. For county highway superintendents, there is a bond requirement. For counties, if there is no appointed superintendent, the county board must assume the role of the superintendent with all of its responsibilities. Superintending requires certain knowledge and skills as described in statutes as a competent, experienced, practical road builder it involves a lot of time and effort to do it right and is likely asking too much of board members to take on that role, not to mention the loss of incentive payments. The superintendent is key to Nebraska's successful road and street programs. Road and street crews and supporting personnel are critically important. So it follows that the superintendent's professional management and leadership is essential for success. There are funding opportunities available. You need to know what they are and how and when to take advantage of them. They likely come with requirements, some of them complex. Superintendents need to know these requirements or how to find out. Managing risk, avoiding penalties and delays, and minimizing liability are also important aspects of program management. The next several slides discuss some aspects of Chapter 39, Article 25, Funding Distribution to Political Subdivisions. State law encourages professional management of highways, roads, and streets. One tangible way it does this is to provide incentive payments to each entity that appoints a superintendent, licensed by the Board of Examiners, and who performs certain minimum duties for the entity, including active management of the road or street system. In Nebraska law, municipalities are not required to have a licensed city street superintendent, and not all counties are required to have a licensed county highway superintendent. However, if the political subdivision appoints a licensed superintendent and duties are performed as required by state statute, it can receive incentive payments. Annual amounts to counties vary from $4,500 to $12,750 and to cities and municipalities, they vary from $300 to $8,500, depending on several factors, including population and the type of license, Class A or Class B. The minimum duties are listed here. They include developing a one in six plan or program, annually developing a program for design, construction, and maintenance, developing an annual budget for that program, submitting plans and programs to the governing body for approval, and implementing the approved plans and programs. To receive incentive payments, your entity must submit a completed and signed year-end certification form. It will be mailed to your clerk, and the completed form is due back to the Nebraska Department of Transportation by December 31st via regular mail. To reiterate, in order to receive incentive payments, the appointed licensed superintendent must be actively involved in the total road or street program. The Highway Allocation Fund is the main mechanism for distributing funds to Nebraska's counties and municipalities for developing and maintaining their roads and streets. Of course, a county or municipality provides its own local funding, and it may also obtain funds from other state and federal sources. The focus of the next several slides is to give an overview of Nebraska's Highway Allocation Fund. First, however, note that the proper use of funds is addressed in several state statutes. The screen shows two of them at the top. 
Highway allocation funds and its local matching funds may be spent only on highways, streets, and roads and related items and activities. Borrowing from the fund to pay for other items is against state law. Money from the highway allocation fund, which is funded largely through the State Highway Trust Fund, is distributed to counties and municipalities. Half goes to counties and half goes to municipalities. The Nebraska Department of Transportation calculates the amounts that go to each political jurisdiction and the state treasurer distributes the money monthly. The Nebraska DOT computes county highway allocation amounts monthly using the seven factors shown here. Rural and total populations, length of bridges, rural and total motor vehicle registrations, miles of roads, both county and if there's township, and the value of farm products sold. Each of these factors is weighted 10% or 20% as shown. The Nebraska Department of Transportation computes municipality highway allocation amounts monthly using the three factors shown here. Total population of the municipality, total motor vehicle registrations within the municipality, and the total number of lane miles of streets within the jurisdiction. Each of these factors is weighted as shown with the total population weighing the most at 50%. Regarding the number of lane miles, the Nebraska DOT will annually email municipal clerks a request to submit updated information. Municipal clerks must register on the Nebraska Enterprise Content Management Portal and submit updated lane mile information annually to the Nebraska DOT using that portal. Previously, the local matching requirement was mentioned as related to the highway allocation funds distributions. For counties, cities of the first class, cities of the second class, and villages, the first half of the highway allocation funds distributions have no matching requirement. The second half is required to be matched $1 for every $2 received. Local funds can be used to match highway allocation funds or it could be from other sources, federal or state, including buyback funds. You cannot use highway allocation funds to match highway allocation funds. An example would be state aid bridge funds, which come from the highway allocation fund. Incentive payments are taken off the top of the highway allocation fund, and no local match is required for those funds. To build and maintain a good road or street system requires adequate funding, a solid workforce, and an effective, efficient, and accountable organization. Each entity has its own organization and sets of duties. This screen provides an overall view from a statutory frame of reference, roles and responsibilities with respect to roads and streets. The governing body is responsible for oversight and setting policy. Oversight includes employees as well as extended staff, such as consultants and contractors. The appointed licensed superintendent actively manages the road or street program. The superintendent manages on a day-to-day -day basis road or street department staff and extended staff such as consultants and contractors. Cooperation with other entities through interlocal agreements can and should be an important way of doing business. Over one-fourth of Nebraska counties have a township form of government in which the townships are usually responsible for road maintenance. Nebraska's public road system is one of the largest in the nation, serves sparsely populated areas as well as large urban centers, all of which have transportation needs. Modern standards must address roads of various functions, classifications, and areas. There is not enough money to build every road as if it is an arterial, which is why we have an integrated system of public roads with a variety of classifications and standards. Good program management leads to more efficient use of public roads funds. This screen shows a few online websites that provide additional information on Nebraska's road and street program. Press the pause button if you wish to write down any of these web links. This has been an introduction, big picture review of managing Nebraska's public roads and streets. Sections 21, 23, and 25 of Chapter 39 of the State Statutes set forth the legislature's requirements for the needs of all public roads in terms of design, construction, and maintenance, financial, and management.
This is a starting point. More information and details are provided in this series of videos and in face-to-face -face courses provided by the Nebraska Department of Transportation and the Nebraska Local Technical Assistance Program known as Nebraska LTAP.